All right. Yeah, just very quickly, my background. So um, I've been a Green Party member for the last decade. Um, I uh, was London Regional Coordinator for four years through to October. And uh, prior to that, I'd also been a um, coordinator for Southwark. Um, yeah, so uh, obviously we're all very well aware that the Green Party does not have a standard national canvassing solution. Uh, and, you know, on and off over the years, the National Party has looked at the options available kind of to it. And each time it's kind of hit the the problem that fundamentally buying any of the or building itself, you know, professionally, a canvassing solution was just fundamentally unaffordable. So hence why we have this gap. And uh, therefore, we've ended up a sit with a situation across the party where, you know, local parties are, um, uh, you know, the, have either gone ahead and built various forms of local solution. Um, of varying levels of complexity, ranging from spreadsheets uh, in most cases, but through to, you know, relatively uh, what kind of uh, complex databases, applications, or bought things like EARS, which is the old Lib Dem solution, um, and deployed that locally. But there's, you know, no commonality. Um, there's nothing that is tailored to what we want to do. And there's been, a, you know, for those who are just using spreadsheets, it's a lot of uh, data management work, puts off a lot of parties from even starting canvassing. I've known, I've seen that in London. Um, for those that are, uh, you know, who have gone ahead, like maybe Bristol or Brighton or other places like that, North Tyneside, who've gone and built varying, uh, various local solutions, we're then, you know, spending lots of time reinventing the wheel slightly differently um, and not necessarily consistently and not necessarily meeting particularly modern, you know, kind of uh, GDPR and security kind of and uh, scalability kind of considerations. So none of them are truly adoptable as national level solutions. So about a year ago, long before I actually got involved, um, uh, just over a year ago, a bunch of members who are all professional software developers um, and, and otherwise interesting or others who are interested in canvassing um, got together. And, but that, that was the nucleus, the, the kind of driver was um, that they were basically said, right, you know, the only way this is going to happen is if we build something for the party that from the outset is a national going to be a national level solution that we're going to do as volunteers so we're not going to you know charge anything or own it or it'll be a for the party um and uh therefore they got stuck in they um they put a lot of effort in up front to thinking about the data model because you getting that right is really important um and then they started building the functionality um and they got to the stage by about uh late summer that it was they could now see, okay, we've got the core of a piece of software, but now we need to start thinking about how we turn that into something that is usable, usable by local parties that, you know, has been formally signed off from a GDPR perspective, from a hosting perspective, um, you know, from a how we're going to support it um, uh, going forward. And and so I would, the National Party gave me a shout. I was just finishing up, as I say, as London coordinator looking to continue to be involved you know get something I could be involved in but it wasn't quite as intense as being regional coordinator um and this and so I got involved to kind of project manage it at that stage so this is very you know very much a national although it's volunteer driven and initiated it is very much nationally sponsored solution that we're building you know Chris Williams and uh Stuart Christie who's the head of digital are both heavily involved in um uh, kind of oversight and input into what we're doing so i think it's important to kind of uh they're very clear that this is uh the solution the party needs if you know what i mean um so yeah that's where we've got to we got to the stage by uh the end of march where we'd all agreed that it could be used by local parties and we had hoped that we'd have done that in time to support some parties a kind of pilot phase uh as part of the May local elections, but obviously 
the, the parties we work with were too heavily involved with their uh, short campaigns by that stage. So we we all agreed that you know we just needed to let them see out the last month or so of the the short campaign month. Um, and also quite a lot of our volunteers were heavily involved in their local party campaigns, as you might imagine. So we we were kind of relatively short staffed. So we so what we have done instead is we've started uh, the first pilot in a is supporting a by-election in Camden. So that's happening as we speak. The by-election itself was on the 1st of June. Teams out this evening, I know, uh, and I'm using the app. Um, the we're now we've been we've been talking to other local parties to start who some of the ones who've been shortlisted for the original pilot, but who've got, you know, kind of um who do their elections in thirds or whatever, and maybe that's in your areas too as well, I don't know. But therefore they're already starting to think about 2024. So they're like, actually, now we've kind of drawn breath after the May elections. Can we now look at getting stuck into using it for 2024? So like Worcester, uh Burnley are are looking to get involved, possibly um uh North Tyneside uh may well get involved and, and possibly Birmingham as well um as 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 kind of some and Lambeth um as some of the early kind of uh areas that are looking to pilot uh, and be kind of part of that first pilot slash phase one of the rollout. Um so yeah you know I think the other thing just to say is you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it I'm not here to sell it as such I'm going to be really upfront about what it where we've got to um, you know, the focus has been on, firstly, being able to load up electoral register data in all its myriad of variants that you get across the country. You know, this is again about thinking about this as a national scale solution and also how we build, allow parties that have historic data to bring that along as well. You know, you can't lose that. So job one was to be able to actually just get the electoral register and historical data into the system. Job two is to then provide the basic method of being able to capture canvassing data on the, you know, as you're out and about, either, as I say, directly on the app, and we can have maybe a quick look at that in a minute, uh, in, in a minute uh, or through printed sheets that it'll produce and then, you know, input screens afterwards. We are now, having done that, we're now in the process of looking at uh, and developing rounds support, um, which is obviously kind of, um, the, the geographic like element of kind of filtering what you're doing. Anyway, right, where was I? Um, yes, so we have got, um, yeah, so we built the canvassing bit, we're building round support. The next bit is targeting so that you can then basically say for this round, I want to then uh, filter on the basis of I you know, just want mark register or I want postal voters or I want, G1s and G2s or what or squeeze message out, you know, I want to go and canvas conservative uh voters or whatever. Um, so that that will be one of the next steps. Other things we've got in the pipeline are data, uh, the next step of data upload, which would be the incremental registers, the monthly and annual updates, uh members, um, We've got member uh, voter moves as well, so that you can try and keep track of people moving around your area and keep the history. Um, at the moment, we, in terms of interrogating data, we are just finishing the ability to drop it all out into a CSV, so you can do analytics, uh, you know, analysis in Excel or whatever. But again, in the fullness of time, we would like to build reports. Um, yeah, I think that's the, you know, and then obviously polling day support as well. We've got a design uh, for doing get out the vote on polling day, but again, it'll be, so it'll be there well ahead of May next year, but it's not implemented just yet. So that's kind of uh, an overview of what we've got and where we're, where we're taking it. Okay, um, so this is the live system. Um, it's our... It's set up from the start with the right framework to take in, for example, all the local part, all the, you know, kind of uh, electoral polling districts across the country, uh, across England and Wales. And um, that's all fed to us actually from uh, national party systems now that they've set up standing data for, you know, kind of all that kind of information. Um, so 
I won't go through data upload because that's quite an you know involved thing and we can cross that bridge as and when you're you know ready to actually look at your data and um how we would get that uploaded but as I say there's a lot of work that's gone into making really quite an intelligent yet easy to use system that is comfortable with all as I say all the various formats that you get from uh the the different systems used by different local authorities so I Sorry, Colin. All I'm yeah. going to say, uh, we we you don't need to go through everything in detail, but like even seeing a rough like here's the basic form. So, yeah, so that's a little bit just to visualize it. Oh no, absolutely. So this is what um, South Hampstead, which is the ward, um, is so that I've got everything that's got uh, you know all the local parties because I'm a kind of global access. But you would just have your own local party and then the the elements underneath. So for Camden here, we've got their uh, wards and here's South Hampstead. So at the moment, in the absence of round functionality, it basically is kind of polling district and then road in alphabetical order. But as I say, you'll be able to kind of reorder that. Um, so you've got two options. You can either do the live data entry um, or you can print Canvas sheets. These are um, formatted to go onto A4 um kind of landscape and then you can work through all those um uh, and take them off you know as you go if you're doing if you're doing it from a printed basis um and then you can just very simply enter you know enter that information in um from when you get back but obviously that's the second best solution what we actually want to be doing is entering the data as we go um so this actually you know this is the, the actual mobile screen obviously uh, fits nicely onto a standard um, mobile phone display. Um, and basically what you get is for each house hold, each address, you get, uh, so it's groups, all the people that are in there. Um, you can add notes about the actual address itself, which uh, I've used myself up in Camden. Well, when I've found a, you know, that flat B is round the corner and up the stairs kind of style. Um, around the back or whatever, you can put that in and then you know that next time it will say that un immediately underneath the address. Then it also has the status in terms of when you was last visited. And this counts kind of uh, away from when um, when you were last there. So for example, if you were there, so nobody's been to this particular address yet, but otherwise it would say like two minutes ago, one day ago, one week ago, or whatever it would be. So that's quite useful. Um, the other thing this does is also means that if you go to this address a second time by accident, say, you know, go down a street it'll, and, you, and somebody's just been there recently, it'll pop up and say, do you want to canvas this again? Um, it was canvassed two minutes ago. Or you can just go, oh, no, actually, actually, that means the other person I was with has just been there. I'll skip it and go on to the next one, for example. I, I found that really useful when we were kind of working down a street in pairs. Um, so uh, I was, uh, we didn't overlap. Then uh, the election that we're talking about, this is their by-election. Um, these two people have to be postal voters. Um, you then use the standard target to win one to five. If they've got an already exist, you know, expectation that will be highlighted, but you can select it um, and you can put in what party they, you know, normally support. If you've accidentally, oh, you know, actually meant to put it down here, you can just undo it. Um, you can add any flags and these will appear again next to the person. So, you know, if they've said they'll take a poster or, you know, they'd be happy to help or whatever, um, you can do that. You can enter any notes and specifically if it's casework, you can get contact details to go back to them. If they've asked you about whatever, uh, you, you then promise to go back to them on. Yeah, I mean, at one level, you know, that's kind of it. Um, you then can either go back, backwards, forwards, because we haven't got the round support, but then it would be whatever was in the order of the, you'd set up the round, or you can go back to the, the street or the round to then pick up a different address. And at, at one level, you know, that is, that is the canvassing data capture. So, as I say, I thought, um, I'm just going to, so therefore it's not recording live data. Um, 
and as we can see, you know, if we pick uh, Camden, they have now got quite a few people who they've uh, canvassed as uh, supporting them, so that's good. Um, but obviously, sadly, you know, there's uh, quite a lot of people also say they're not going to support them, but there you go. <laughs> At least we know 